Good day to you all and welcome back to the Eastern Block, the channel that offers an in-depth view at automotive car culture in the Eastern Europe. You see, we car guys, well, we love all sorts of cars. Sure, we prefer high performance and enthusiast cars, but we also like strange cars, quirky cars, luxury cars, and even SUVs. Fact of the matter is though that most of us can't really afford to buy or enjoy them. This seems to be more evident in my home country, as the contrast between automobiles is the highest one around. You could easily find at a stoplight a 100,000 euro car, mixing in with uh, beat up uh, second hand rejects from 20 years ago. You see, as Europe was once infatuated with the oil burners and is now switching to more eco-friendly uh, modes of transportation such as hybrid or full electric cars countries like romania are willing to absorb most of its leftovers this is one of the main reasons why we have so many boring old hatchbacks on the roads because in a way, that's exactly what we want and we can afford. They're economical, they're cheap to buy and to run, and they offer us basic transportation. But somewhere along the way, we got confused and considered this to be the norm, this to be this situation to be every car guy's dream. Although I don't think that is the case. It might be for some in my country, but not for me. This is actually every car guy's dilemma, because in a sea of drab and boring old cars, you need to find something to distill the essence of true car passion. I don't know if I'm going to get there, but I'm asking you, I'm inviting you to come along. It might be an interesting journey. And to continue along this journey, I have chosen a quintessential car, at least for the Romanian people. This is the first-generation Dacia Logan. At last, after decades of poorly made goods, including automobiles, the everyday Romanian working man could at, could at least aspire to own a car that doesn't break down, offers enough comfort, plus space to carry the whole family and the traditional sack of potatoes or the holiday pig in the trunk. Or could he really? aspired to do so, I mean. I'll try to explain that later on regarding the way it was positioned on the market and what it cost in our home country. But for now, let's take a closer look at what the Logan is, how it looks and what it offers. In terms of general looks and feel of this car, well, you get what you pay for. It's an obvious and rather uh, consistent design choice here. You have th three clear volumes, which by the way, I really appreciate. You got a rather tall stance, as you can see as I move closer to, to the car and I'm about 175 meters. You can see that it's, well, it's actually rather tall, it's taller than other uh, contemporary cars, uh, contemporary designs. I don't know if I like that or not. What I can tell you I like is the clear um, three box, three volume design and the fact that this thick uh, A-pillar does not go over the front wheels. I especially appreciate that choice in design. I think too many cars try to emulate the MPV look in the 2000s and now are trying to do so with the SUVs and crossovers and I don't quite find that attractive. In this basic economy car there seems to be a more consistent design choice. Yeah, sure, the front headlights are not really that impressive, nor is the fascia, but at the time Dacia was really trying to keep things, well, cheap and to define a sort of uh, brand image, which uh, in the 2000s it really lacked. But there are also things that I don't 
quite find attractive or impressive like these doors you can see the well the the rim of the window is really thick and there's there's a lack of curvature that pleasing design that goes over the body shell of the car in more expensive offerings from the market you have that well you have that more sculpted design more pulled back look more dynamic this is just this this car just offers a slab of door and not a very solid one at that have a listen when you close it ooh that's not nice well of course it it is it's, I'm not trying to make fun of it. It is sufficiently and adequately put together. It just it lacks any of that, uh, well, any of that cladding that sort of buffers the noise and offers a more solid feel, even if this is still perfectly functional. You can see these rather obvious design choices if you take a closer look. The window cutter doesn't go over the doesn't try to hide the 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 mounting point for the front mirrors and there is no th these well these uh, rubber um these rubber um pieces are not really so subtle so if you just pull a bit on them you can easily remove them from the bodywork there's also a lack of cladding here in front of the windscreen on the on the base of it but these are just minor details what I do find worrying and I I really hate about this car is the way the C pillar goes and it's well it's a really thick piece of uh, bodywork and it's not really pleasant when doing backwards maneuvers you can really find it a bit I don't know, awkward, almost dangerous if you're not paying attention to your driving. It would have been really nice to have a bigger greenhouse here, but then but then again, I guess I'm just nitpicking. This was supposed to be a cheap car after all. Also, it's pretty clear that it was meant to be taller on the back than in the front. I don't know, combined with the three volume design, it does give it that interesting dynamic haunch looks stands something uh, I find it I, I think it's a coincidence because this is a cheap car after all and I don't think anybody at Dacia thought it should look sporty it should look good but not sporty but they somehow made it look a bit more dynamic than it really is the wheelbase is adequately long it's 2.5 six something meters 2600 plus millimeters it is adequate for this length of car this is not supposed to be a sedan a limousine uh, a saloon is it is a saloon but it's based on a mini platform it's a b segment based car its underpinnings are actually of the first generation Renault Clio and some of its engine have their roots there as well speaking of engines at its launch the Logan offered two gasoline choices a 1.4 and a 1.6 engine both a four-cylinder unit mated to a manual five-speed gearbox this particular car has the 1.4 variant which has 75 horsepower and 112 newton meters of torque which is enough to propel it to 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour in about 14 seconds or so it is a slower car with this engine especially when trying to reach highway speeds but at least it offers enough of the line pull to get you going moving along that that though is mostly due to its clever gearbox I suspect rather than the engine performance itself and just for the fun of it let's have a listen to it
I haven't driven the car enough to make an assessment or an opinion about fuel economy, but if you want figures, there, here they are. It's going to do about 7.5 to 8 liters per 100 kilometers officially, or about uh, 32 mpg, I guess, but that, those are the official numbers. Uh, anyway, I think my own personal opinion and experience with the Eastern European roads tells me that this will easily do about 35 to 38 mpg outside of the city for quasi highway driving and about 8 to 10 liters of gasoline per 100 kilometers with city driving that's about 23 to 25 or 26 mpg somewhere around that uh, somewhere around that figure and those are not bad figures at all don't get me wrong those are realistic numbers which i would be pleased with uh, again I don't know if that's relevant or not, only if you're looking into buying this sort of car. Well, it's got independent suspension at the front and a torsion bar at the rear, but then again, that wouldn't be surprising at all. You wouldn't expect fully independent suspension on this type of, um, on this class of automobile. It's also got front disc brace, brakes, but rear drums at the back, and that to me is a very low point. I don't really appreciate cars with drum brakes. I had one at some point and it was rather disappointing and uh, almost worrying in some circumstances. I won't, call, I won't call them dangerous, but on a wet surface at night, you'd rather have disc than drum brakes. At least that's my opinion. You can make of it what you will. Before we move on, I must make some disclosures. This is not the best example of a Dacia Logan to use when reviewing. Actually, it's one of the worst choices you could make. Unfortunately, it was the only one I had at hand. On the bright side, it has only stacked up 59,000 kilometers in its 17 years, 17 year lifespan but on the downside well you can see the bodywork the paint is all matted the interior is highly deteriorated uh well the tires and suspension setup well actually they are a wreck so this car has seen a lot of city miles let's put it at that it had, it had a sort of adequate maintenance along its life but it wasn't it was a workhorse and continues to be so it's the second car in a family and it takes up all the chores when it comes to carrying uh, loading and moving stuff around and that's pretty rough for an economy sedan it's not a pickup it's not a van and it's not something that you would normally load with cement bricks or any other types of construction materials used for hobbies not for uh, not for professional work nevertheless i just wanted to point that out and to say that at least in that regard I do appreciate what the Logan is and what it can offer. And another little point that I would like to throw out there. Well, it doesn't seem to have any rust. Yeah, sure, the bodywork is a mess, but there's no rust anywhere. I mean, maybe there's some beneath, but it's not visible and the car is not wrecked. So yeah, good points, Logan. Moving in the inside, things are quite obvious and unsurprising. There has been a lot of cost saving done to this interior. First off, I would like to point out that uh, in the Logan's defense, everything is well put together and it, well, it sort of stands the test of time. There's, there is a continuity and a consistency to the way this interior is put together. Nothing's nothing is too squeaky or uh, unevenly finished there are no sharp edges you can't really find unfixed screws or uh, things that are not put together properly which by the way were an issue on older dachias 
Uh, but now comes the bad part. Uh, well, really, this interior is, well, it's crap, really. <laughs> I, there is way too much hard plastic. I mean, there is no soft, there are no soft touches material to be found here. The gear lever is chunky and soft. It's like holding a piece of putty in your hands and the steering wheel as well has been i don't know has been well it has been thrashed and destroyed by the uv uh, rays and the way it's been handled look the the actual rim the actual rubber on the rim itself is peeling off the the metal um skeleton of the steering wheel so that's well that's a real uh, bummer I guess there's no CD player only a cassette player way back in 2004 when this car was launched I launched I guess cassettes were still a thing I should know because I caught the full cassette fever but I still don't remember when they have gone missing there are some, I don't know, basic climate controls here, but no air conditioning to be offered in this car. Only basic uh, heating and ventilation. Um, the ergonomics are also a huge letdown. I mean, I'm sitting here and bear in mind that this is, well, it's a used car, but it's still not totally um, thrashed so it's still relevant in terms of um, uh, well in terms of how the upholstery or the interior holds up and really the, the seating position is rubbish there's no other way for it there's nothing in terms of ergonomics here that could that you could actually find at least not pleasing but as a silver lining of sorts well, yeah, maybe these heater vents look nice and are easy to clean and operate. But other than that, hard plastics everywhere, poorly designed seats. They don't offer support, but they don't offer a correct position either. <laughs> the, the door card is um, quite um, obviously designed from one piece, but it at least it doesn't rattle too bad and and it has some piece of cloth here in the middle to make it look more classy everything is injected molded there's no piece of interior that it's actually painted except for this center console uh, lid or a frame here whatever you call it on the plus side this car has dual airbags so I guess there are some safety features after all. Uh, oh, and the all-important power-operated front windows, though the commands are on the center console rather than on the door where you would find them more uh, convenient. But there's, there are those um, cost-cutting measures that I have mentioned before. And the horn is not on the middle of the steering wheel, but rather to the side. Typical French design from way back, which was still used on some 1990s Dacia models. Kind of loud, but yeah, sorry about that. Whoever lives here. <laughs> the back seats of this car are nothing to write home about. Well at least there's enough space for three people inside here just barely there is enough headroom but really the cutout for this door is rather danger dangerously low and well when getting out you risk uh, bumping your head if you're not careful the, the seats themselves are not so comfortable and uh, quite uh, and quite predictably uh, the plastics are of the same quality as in front it's not like with more expensive cars where actually the front uh, plastics are of much higher quality uh, than the rear ones in the Logan consistency is the name of the game there aren't any uh, covers for the screws but then again this is an economy car so you get what you pay for 
Right, so driving the Dutch yellow gun. Ooh, there's a nice sound for you. Okay, so first off, what I like about this car. It's got a pleasant enough gearbox, it's easy to operate and it's rather, uh, well, it's rather, it's not precise, but it's light and it's intuitive somewhat. You can shift, you can get fast shifting times. Clutch is a bit worn in this particular unit because it, uh, it clicks, it engages quite high. As you can see, I'm not used to it, so I'm revving it quite hard. Let me just pass these nice little policemen here and then we'll continue with our review. They were sort of looking at me, but they were nice enough people. Yeah, so the clutch engagement is rather disappointing. It's almost dangerous, but uh, it's not fun in any way. There's also a short circuit on the electrical side because when I press the brake, uh, the left sig signal stock seems to give me some trouble. I'm not going to insist too much on the driving side of this review because, well, I hope you could see this. Well, the steering wheel, it's moving by its own accord. It's like steering uh, system by Schrodinger. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. It's very imprecise and this is due to a defect. I don't know if it's just the tires. I suspect it's the whole bushes and suspension setup at fault. And uh, while well, it's not really inspiring me to go anywhere near the limit of this car. The brakes, well, they're okay and average but as I've said, there are drum brakes on the back at the... But as I've said, there are drum brakes at the back, so you might have some trouble uh, engaging them on wet surfaces and at the limit. They might be unstable and dangerously so. It, it might be just a, just a feeling, but then again, I wouldn't risk it. I consider this car maneuverable. Well, yeah, on B roads and country roads at low speeds, I guess it's, it holds its, uh, its own. And the fact that it's a light car, only 1,050 declared kilograms, so that's just, just barely over one ton. Well, that means that the suspension doesn't have to work too hard to keep this car on the road bad side is that this same platform was used for the Dacia Duster, the fabled crossover SUV thingy from Dacia offerings, which was way heavier and had a much taller stance, well, given that it's an SUV, and that is a very unstable car. I can vouch for that day and night all the time. But that's another story altogether. I hope to get a good example of the Dacia Duster and to review it and to show you what I mean. Gear, gearing, as I've said, is well positioned for a swift acceleration in town, but any speed above 60 kilometers per hour is, well, it's kind of hard to achieve. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't uh, try to overtake lorries in this car on highway roads, but then again, that's just me. More confident drivers have attempted this with some success. I wouldn't recommend it with this engine, but so it's not a sporty car, it's just a car. For this car's buyer, it doesn't matter what the suspension setup is, what the acceleration times are, and rightly so. You it's a rather interesting um, driving sensation. Well, this, this is basic driving 101. Manual gearbox, five speed, four cylinder, small gasoline engine, three, four door, three box sedan. Headlights, sun visor, steering wheel, electric or power windows. This is driving basics. It could have been better, but it's okay. 
it's nothing spectacular nor should it be should you buy one as a second hand I don't really think you could find one uh, I don't really think you could find a good example this is rather a paradox this is you see there are so many used Logans in my country we tend to uh, think of uh, worn examples as the standard for the price range a good one will not be cheap and the bad ones are everywhere the, you know the types of cars all taxis all the um, company cars all delivery cars and stuff like that you should never ever ever buy that type of car even if uh, you think it had a good service or everybody who drives a company car in Romania is thinking of free tra transportation so that's a no-no should you find a good example of a Logan I think you would look somewhere in the in the area in the you would look somewhere south of 3,000 euros for the first generation why you should buy one it's one of the last affordable and um, reliable four-cylinder gasoline engines with no uh, turbine or other gimmicks no hybrid power here no automatic transmission if you like basic engineering and cheap to fix cars this is the car for you you could do well you could teach yourself to do it in some departments if you own a house why you shouldn't buy this car well it's it's rather disappointing um, in its interior department and it's rather hard to find a good example plus the engines are meeting only euro 4 standards so, so if uh, in two years time there will be a euro 6 or hybrid or electric some sort of uh, combination of uh, emissions uh, taxation in the near future in Romania's towns you'll be looking at extra money to spend so if you have a tight budget I don't know that this I don't know whether this is the correct car for you there are actually quite a lot of ways I could make fun about this car whether it's uh, reg in regards to its subpar performance or its uh, uh, cheaply made interior or poor handling characteristics but I'm not going to do that and that's because I truly hate this car not for what it is a sensible economical uh, sedan which can offer basic transportation on the cheap side but for what it was supposed to do and failed and that is be the first be the first car for the Romanian people who could not actually afford a proper Western made car you see this car was launched when I was about 20 or 22 years old and ready to take on the country roads with a Mad Max fervor for all things automotive I was a true car guy I still am but then I was more radical and I and was I eager to get my hands on a first new car but you see there was a problem this car advertised at 5,000 euros were was nowhere was nowhere near as cheap at the beginning it ended up costing about 6,000 euros in my home country and to make things worse it was actually cheaper in other countries than where it was made so if you there was actually a market for this um, people speculated on this uh, price uh, on this price variation and went to Hungary actually to buy new cars and sell them back in Romania at a profit which really hurt the the image of the Dacia brand in our country uh, but at the time I also realized that this wasn't supposed to free the Romanian working man at all it was supposed to fill a niche in the Western car market you see Renault and other brands were actually moving up market and with the prices as well so there was a natural gap to be filled with uh, cheaper cars Volkswagen did it with Skoda so Renault thought well we might as well take on Dacia since well so Renault thought well we might as well take uh, Dacia under our wing since we had tie-ins with them before 
um, the first Romanian made car was actually based on an old Renault design but that's another story so you see I ended up being rather disappointed of this car it was supposed to offer basic transportation for the Romanian people but it ended up being a, well a huge letdown for those who were barely affording a car in their family so I guess that's the reason I hate it well I don't hate it per se but I guess that's the reason I hated the whole Dacia concept at the time so I guess there's a closing line for you I hate the Dacia because it's a sensible economic sedan and that's a true car guys view so thank you for watching in the background and whoa and behold two da ancient Dacias Please have a look as I pass near them. Can you see them? I'll open the doors. There they are. Interesting looking things. Designed by Renault in the 60s. This the, was the Renault 12. And taken over as a proprietary design in Romania in the socialist Republic of Romania basically the communist Romania and we use them for um, well we use them as the basis for the Dacia brand wonder if these are for sale or they're just abandoned here